Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Uh, as you can see, I'm not Carmen Tavalika, who was supposed to give the talk. Unfortunately, she fell ill uh, this night, and she is not here. I mean, she's in Florence. Greetings to you, but she's unable to deliver the talk. So it's a micro surprise for me that I'm giving the talk now, but let's say new to everybody, so that's fine. Um, second thing was that uh, the so maybe some of you have been in Bucharest at the conference. She used this newspaper style, so where you move around in the newspaper, and this was exactly the plan, but uh, the HTML was eaten by the system, and so I had to convert it to static P, uh, PNG files, never mind. So imagine it would smoothly fly around. Yeah, whatever. So the topic is we are presenting news in Actinia, what has happened in the past 12 months, and there's been happening quite a bit. Um, overall, let's say, uh, you can see what's here. So we want to give short notes about Actinia itself in this presentation. Additionally, the latest features, of course, which have been implemented. We are now, meanwhile, as at Actinia version 4. So uh, this is comparable faster than the major revisions of GRASGIS, for example, um, where it took us almost 40 years to reach uh, version 8. Um, anyway, so then uh, I will talk about Actinia Stack Plugin, Open EO API, uh, Open EO GRASGIS driver. So let's say lots of integration we are looking at. Uh, we are part of Mundialis. Uh, Actinia is importantly an OSGEO community project. It's not a Mundialis project. I mean, we are maybe the main authors. Uh, original author was Zürin Gebert back then. Um, but uh, we are taking care. And of course, it's on GitHub, and everybody's invited to contribute. Um, in the corner, you see Jorge. He was uh, being developing the Actinia Stack integration, he, uh, doing this as a student from um, University of Münster for being in, uh, in Bonn for a while, remotely at least. And he contributed this part. So next chapter is uh, introduction to Actinia, who hasn't seen anything yet, just to give you an idea. And Actinia is a REST API uh, around GRASGIS, but not only. We also have support for uh, ESA Snap, for example, or uh, GDAL is naturally part of everything. So you can also bring your own code, like Python scripts or executables, whatever you want. So whatever can be automated can be put into the workflows. Um, there are two important concepts. Some of them have seen this, but I'm very fast on this just to understand what we are talking about. Grass has uh, this notion of locations and map sets. You can imagine this like project directory with subdirectory just to better organize the data. And importantly, one location or project must have one projection only. Um, and then the other part is that uh, Grass is a modular system with plenty of modules yeah, doing particular things. They are organized in a natural way, like I dot something is the imagery image processing, V dot something vector processing, and so on. And the second part of the name suggests what the module does. So like this, we have up to 500 of them, so quite a few. And uh, this is, of course, something which, which you might want to orchestrate uh, in a cloud environment. So why having this wealth of different functionality, and why not putting some cloud, cloudish stuff around, like a REST API, in order to uh, develop workflows and do major number crunching using this technology. So uh, we put a REST API on top. You can naturally list all the data content and so on. You can uh, also s control uh, on a user-specific base which uh, commands a user may use and may not. You have the natural, uh, the, the common uh, user access control and everything. Also limits for pixels so that if you have a, let's say, cloud instance which you have to pay for, which is normal, that your user doesn't burn your cloud budget in no time by just processing entire continents or something like that. So you can limit things here. Limit the duration of the computation and so forth. Um, yeah, this is possibly enough. So how to deploy everything? Uh, we have different options here. 
uh, those familiar with Docker and Kubernetes, they may already know what I will say. So you, you can imagine that uh, you have small Actinia workers which are floating around in the cloud. And those are then orchestrated by the, the core system. And well, you basically launch these uh, workers if you have a drop. And then it depends on your data size if you want to split your data and send them to different nodes or not. This really depends on the problem. For example, for time series, you could, uh, if you have a stack of data, must not be time series, can even be something else. Um, you can send them to different nodes and uh, at the very end you reassemble all the results. Uh, we have different technologies here uh, where we can deploy stuff on. This depends, some customers, we are using this also in in our activities, they have their own cloud and say you need to, to launch things on, on our infrastructure, which is possibly protected and so on. And since it is uh, open source, there is no problem with that. Um, yeah, Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, so we can even use Minipod. I don't know if anyone use, knows that. You can run it on your laptop and basically launch your micro cloud instance with everything on your laptop if you want to play around and pretend to be a big data center, for example, in order to test workflows on tiny data sets and then you eventually deploy it in the, in the real data center. Okay, now a bit of REST API, how does it look like? If you want to uh, uh, query the system what data are on the server or in the infrastructure, let's say, you can send a REST put, uh, GET request Slash locations will give you the list of what is there. So here we have, it's a bit small, I apologize, but this is also related to this conversion. Um, I try to tell you what is there. So on the left side, get locations, and then you get the names of those which are projects, let's say. And uh, on the right side, you can look into the sub uh, directories and see what data sets are sitting inside. Um, yeah, this would give you, uh, in not really visible, a list of maps. Uh, and additionally, if you want to get a quick view what map is there and how does it look like, you can just use the render end, uh, endpoint. So one of those things is called endpoint in REST uh, speech, REST ABI. And you can see it's a kind of hierarchical system um, which you, uh, where you send the request to the, to the server and something comes back. And in the lower line case, there you say, I want to see this data set, um, this particular name, slash uh, render, and then it will send back um, a picture. So you can take a look. This, of course, comes in uh, JSON encoded, so you need some client for this, but there are different clients available uh, to do things like that. Well, so then we have different types of processing. Uh, User-defined processing, the so-called ephemeral and the persistent ways of doing things, persistent as the name suggests, the data rests on the server. You would have to pay for the storage if you are in a paid cloud environment, of course. So you need to think about it twice. And the ephemeral stuff is you want to compute something, all the interim data, you don't care what happens to them in future. So they will be automatically trashed. And uh, the result, you are offered a download link, for example, or it is sent to a, a cloud-based storage or whatever you prefer. And there you can then uh, go and see, um, uh, sorry, consume the results. So now how to do um, different process chains. So we call it process chains, what uh, used to be called maybe a script or a job or something like this. So it's essentially a list of tasks to be done. Um, they are uh, encoded, you see it on the right side in JSON. So you say step one, step two, step three. And by the way, the input to step one is this data set. It can be even sit on a remote uh, system. You give HTTPS uh, some address and it will fetch it from there. Um, and then you do the processing. You say what you want to compute and eventually you will get the result. And already mentioned, we have support for all the grass modules. Uh, we get, uh, meanwhile, also the explanations, what the module does. Uh, you can retrieve automatically from the system. You can also ask it, what are the input data? What are the input types? Is it a vector map, a raster map, a string, a table, uh, whatsoever? And this can be uh, queried automatically. Um, yeah, the rest I have already mentioned. Okay, back to the newspaper and to the next topic. So, 
Uh, now I will see the classified, so small news, what has happened in the past, and zooming to them, um, what we added in the last month, let's say. So vector upload is now there. By an endpoint, you can upload uh, data in different formats, uh, GeoPackage, GeoJSON, and good old shapefile as well. Uh, seems not to disappear for the time being. Um, and here's an example. This is maybe not useful now. By the way, this, uh, the slides are on GitHub, so you can watch them in full quality and even click on the links then, um, just as a hint. So what else have we done? Enable a separate Redis queue. So Redis is a database uh, which is managing the different jobs. Imagine you have the cloud instance, the users are happily sending stuff to the cloud, and then it needs to be distributed to the different worker nodes and results connected. This maybe didn't come to an end. This one has ended, and please notify the user and whatever communication uh, you can imagine. Um, so the Actinia instance receives jobs and writes it to this Redis, that's a database type, uh, queue, and then somebody is looking at it, of course the system, and doing one after the other, and possibly you can even use priorities or whatsoever. Um, so sometimes it may be useful to have different queues available and this support we have been adding. Um, well, and some other specific technical stuff which I will skip for now. And starting the worker is nothing more than these few unreadable lines where we say uh, start a custom worker queue name and the configuration and then the thing runs. Okay, then very nice, very interesting, a new Actinia Python client. This is maybe quite interesting for some of you. So you can now uh, write a few lines of Python to remote control the Actinia instance. You say import from uh, Actinia, and I think it's not in the slides. Maybe it comes, I don't remember. Um, you can say even pip install Actinia core, and so you get uh, through uh, PyPy, you can now install Actinia itself uh, easily. Okay, so here uh, we have the access to uh, use Actinia through Python, and we will also bring other clients I show later likely to use this uh, Python library because it's quite convenient. You see the functionality, get version, especially you can authenticate, get information about all the data, you can delete stuff if you have something which belongs to your user space which you want to remove. Um, and you can do also process chain validation. Imagine you write this JSON, JSON script with uh, the different uh, process steps to be done. Um, then you need to validate it if it's syntactically, syntactically correct or not. And there's an endpoint for this which tells you, oops, there's something wrong here, please fix. Um, ah yes, by the way, how to write these uh, process chains? You can use GRASS itself. Whatever command, minus minus JSON, will show you it show the thing in Python, uh, sorry, in JSON, of course, and then you can put it to your uh, process chain and then put one together. We have also clients uh, to do it differently, but I will come to this. Okay, um, what else? We have an, a tiling plugin and an Actinia parallel plugin. So from plugin name, you can already imagine that we tried to, so we did some refactoring, we tried to modularize Actinia the, as much possible as uh, yeah, so as much as possible. So the tiling thing is separate. The parallel thing is also separate now. If you need it, you can install it. Otherwise, no need. Um, the idea of tiling is to to chop the area, especially raster maps, of course, into pieces, and then send the uh, individual tiles to different nodes for easier parallel processing. You can define how the tiles should be. Um, Configured, it is written there, so width and height and so on, and the rest is done by this plugin. The parallel mod plugin is still work in progress. Um, here the idea is uh, to take one process chain and split it into pieces. So perhaps uh, the second one part doesn't have to have the previous one, but uh, you can send it in parallel, do several steps in parallel, and then re-aggregate it. Of course, you have to have kind of stop marks in the process chain itself to tell the system what can be uh, split and what cannot. Um, imagine you want to do segmentation and you do segmentation then on different input bands. Why not do this in parallel and then reunite everything for the subsequent classification? 
for example. All right. Um, yeah, more features. I will not read them now. Uh, especially the refactoring is interesting. And yeah, lots of small things uh, with pipelines, with uh, resampling options. If you have once you have heterogeneous data sets, you need to uh, um, to fix the vector, uh, the raster geometry, the pixel geometry, and align them somehow in a clever way. And all this kind of stuff is there. Okay, next topic would be Actinia Stack plugin that is fairly new, developed mainly by Jorge. I already mentioned that. And um, yes, and uh, here we have different, I don't want to go into stack in detail because this has been already presented and there's no time anyway. Um, remember, stack plugin is there. I need to speed up. So we have different uh, create, read, delete, and so on things, uh, collections and instances, what is offered in stack usually. Then we have a stack importer, naturally a stack exporter, so you can get data in and out. And um, this would be the stack part. Let's talk later if you have more questions. Then where all was connected years ago is the Open EO API. So we continue to develop Actinia to be compliant with Open EO. And here uh, Open EO is an API for standardization of, uh, let's say, cloud backends so that you can use um, Open EO API. And in the backend, there could be this one or that one or Actinia. And uh, this is, has been a European project, which is also still under uh, development. Different endpoints, as usual. We married, of course, Open EO and Stack as well. And this was the Open EO part. Uh, how does it work? We use uh, an, a driver for this, Open EO Grasp GIS driver. This has been developed a time ago. And we continue to develop this one to stay compliant also with uh, future changes in Open EO and to bring things together for users. There's just to tell you an, a nice uh, web editor existing in Open EO, which gives you the possibility to uh, graphically put together a workflow and then uh, uh, use it later on. Stack again also here. And uh, here you see a process chain, the different small windows. Uh, no, sorry, the small items which are connected and you can graphically arrange them and then send the job to, uh, to the back end. Okay, I come almost to the conclusion, the outlook. Um, we are working on uh, Keycloak integration, so that is user authentication, uh, and this will take some more time because it's complex stuff. Uh, we want to restructure the modules thematically uh, because with 500 or what uh, different function, functions, it's a bit of an effort to understand what's to be used. But this, since uh, the modules are able to auto-declare themselves, uh, this should be a doable thing. We work continuously on the uh, Python client and uh, will continue, as I mentioned, with the parallel plugin. So everything is sitting on GitHub. Um, a bunch of plugins. We have Actinia Core and Actinia API to study the API itself. All the plugins and different clients. We also develop a QGIS uh, plugin, and uh, this will be published at some point when it is uh, usable, let's say. And yeah, importers, exporters, and Helm charts if you want to deploy it yourself. Um, and this would be my presentation, and I thank you for your attention.